Hey, it's Hawken with Top Don. Today we're coming back to you with another video showing you how to get your R-Link Lite or R-Link J2534 connected to another OEM software. Today we're going to show you how to connect the tool specifically with the Ford FDRS software. Ford FDRS software is used for 2018 and newer Ford vehicles and can be purchased through motorcraftservice.com. So we're going to go ahead and take you through installation of the drivers for the R-Link for use with Ford vehicles, and then we're going to show you how to get the tool connected directly to the FDRS software so that you can carry out whatever operations you are hoping to perform, whether that's programming, uh, service procedures, or whatever else it might be. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to do is boot up the R-Link suite on our PC. Once we have booted up the R-Link suite on our PC, we want to make sure we check under My Device to verify that it shows connected. Obviously, we need to have our USB cable plugged in from the dongle to the PC, and we also need to make sure we plug in either the tool to a Datalink connector, or in the case of the R-Link Lite, an AC power supply that comes with the tool. Then we're going to check the device firmware version here. If you're fully up to date, you'll see the update will be grayed out. If it needs to be updated, it will appear darker, in which case you should update the firmware first. Once we've completed that, we'll go on to the next step. So then we're going to go to driver management, which is the center tab here, and we're going to click on driver info. And then if we have any other drivers installed for other vehicle brands, we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete those before we install the software for the given brand we are working on, in this case, Ford. We want to click that update list to make sure that we see all the ones we have installed. Once we click on the ones we need to uninstall, then it will give us an option and we can uninstall them here. So we're going to go ahead and remove the Chrysler software in this particular situation. It's going to ask us to confirm and we're going to hit yes. And then we're going to proceed to driver download, which is again under driver management and driver download. We're going to click on driver download. Then we're going to find the software for the specific brand we're working on, Ford in this particular case. And we're going to go ahead and click on that and download it. It'll take you to a screen like this, and it will allow you to perform the download. You'll note that they also tell you right here that you do need to be on the latest firmware in order to properly use the drivers. Once we've installed the software, uh, AKA the driver here, we're going to see a little pop-up window that says installed driver. Then we can go back to our driver info and we can check and see if we have the Ford software installed. We can hit our update list button to verify, and now we can see it's successfully installed. At this point, we can now close out of our R-Link suite using the X in the top right corner. The next thing we're going to do is go down to our search box on our Windows menu here, and we're going to type in FDRS. Now, of course, this is under the assumption that we have already purchased a license for FDRS, installed the software from the Ford website, and also performed any necessary software updates to FDRS. Once we've done that, then we can go ahead and launch it from our Windows menu here. So this application will open up like this and you'll see this screen. We're going to come to a main page here. And on the main page, you're going to see it'll wait. You'll see a little bit of a pause from the software for a moment or two here could take a little longer depending on the speed of your computer and the strength of your internet connection. Then the software is going to perform a license search by itself. You don't have to do anything here. Once it finds the license, it's going to go ahead and it's going to turn green. Now, for some reason, it has not found the license. Go ahead, make sure you've logged into the software correctly. We're not going to walk you through that. That is covered in Ford help documents, should you need them. Those will be found on the Motorcraft Service website. So again, we'll see the license page is going to turn green. Then we're going to get a little pop-up window like this that says login. 
and it's going to automatically log in. Again, if you've purchased the license correctly through the Motorcraft Service Portal, you will get a screen. It will automatically authenticate your license based on your user, user credentials, and then the software will automatically authenticate like this and take you to the next step. Assuming it has found your license and authenticated, you will then see the login button will turn green. Typically, you don't have to do any additional steps here. The software will automatically progress. If for any reason it doesn't progress here, then we might want to check and click our login button. Next, on the first time when you boot up the software, you're going to get a device manager prompt like this that will boot up. I recommend you leave the device manager prompt on always at startup. This ensures that you will be able to check and make sure that you have the correct interface selected, aka your R-Link Lite or R-Link J2534, and then you can check, or excuse me, then you can modify it if you need to. So if for some reason it is defaulted to another uh, J2534, or perhaps you also own a VCM3 or VCM2, then it'll allow you to change it back to the R-Link. So here you can see we have the R-Link selected, but we're still going to show you how to change it. We're going to leave this check mark on that we want the device manager to always show up. We're going to click on the drop down here, and we're going to make sure we select our top down R-Link, and then we're going to click the OK button here. And then you should get a little window that pops up like this that says detecting device. And that's going to take a moment or two as it tries to talk to the hardware, aka your R-Link. And if the connection is successful, you're going to see the window will disappear. And you should see this little box down in the bottom right populate into connected to device. You're going to see you have a couple of different things for icons down here. We have the little tool interface that shows we're connected to the J box or R link. And then we also have our internet connectivity symbol here as well. So pretty simple and straightforward to get started and connected with FDRS. And of course, you want to keep in mind that this may change if FDRS gets updated very uh, dynamically. They may change the login process. Uh, this is the login process as of early to mid-2025. But again, as always, this login process may change. We will certainly do our best to provide you with updated videos as the process does evolve. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this short video showing you how to get your R-Link Lite or R-Link J2534 connected to Ford FDRS software. As always, we would appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, and share our videos to anybody who you feel could benefit from them. As always, I'm Hawken, and thanks again for watching.